Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and here we are for this special Thunder Pop Extra tonight on a, is it Monday or it's Tuesday night? Taco Tuesday, Jazz One. Tuesday. Did you have your What's tacos up, today? What's going on, man? Good to see you. No, I knew I missed something today. Same here. I I uh, I missed out on Taco Tuesday today. We had pizza instead. It's not Thursday pizza night. Bro, it's... Taco Tuesday. But but we're happy to I'm happy to have you here on this. Uh... It's good to be here. Um, it was pizza night for me. Jazz one, and I'm Stephen Presley. Uh, we're gonna hit twos tonight on a Tuesday. <laughs> How synchronicity is that? We're going to hit twos on a Tuesday, and here's the oh, twos perfect. we're going to hit. Twos on a Tuesday. We're going to hit Suicide Squad 2. React tonight. And we're going to hit the movies that made us on Netflix, which is now playing on Netflix, season two. So it's all twos. All about the twos on a Tuesday. I didn't plan that, I swear. But I'll take it, man. I'll take it. <laughs> Shameless plug, I want to get this in. I just posted this today. Uh, David Black's top five horror films of all time. And David Black, esteemed Australian filmmaker, um, teamed up with me to provide his countdown for the top five horror films of all time in no particular order. And that's now available on the Thunder Pop YouTube and other places that you get your Thunder Pop. So... Go uh, go check that out, and uh, but it's, there's there's that real creepy, creepy moment that we talk about the Exorcist, and I don't even want to mention that word anymore after our experience in editing that portion of the show. I'm just gonna say it got really weird. That movie, that whole story is weird. But you are you are you familiar oh, with all yeah. the bad luck they had? They, all the bad luck they had when they filmed that movie, all the weird dark. Yeah, energy. yeah, man. Like, yeah, I've heard about some of it, but, uh, man, I tell you, um, I had somebody tell me about being snowed in in Colorado and I'm like, I saw the exorcist, like all work and no play makes jazz a dull boy. <laughs> um, are you a fan of the horror genre? Uh, not as much as I used to be. Yeah, it's like my thing with horror is like if I have trouble sleeping a week later, then uh, that's good horror, you know. Yeah, if it's just like, um, I don't know, like so much of film for me, done some film work myself and worked with actors and friends or actors. A lot of times when I see people in horror movies, I just see people working. Like I see just like the same tropes like over and over mm -hmm. and it's like, unless it's just something just different, it yeah. just feels like, Oh, you're doing the jump scare thing or you're doing the, you know, this or that. Like I feel like a lot of horror I've seen before, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, something new I'm, I'm there for it. Uh, yeah. And, and every so often, maybe five ten, to 10 years, somebody innovates in that genre. And does something a little different. I thought at the time, oh, yeah. Scream, I thought at the time Scream was doing that, a little more humor, um, in the in that whole version of their horror that they did. It kind of was more tongue in cheek, making fun of it, but then also keeping it really horror at the same time. Um, but yeah, so I'll tell you what, I'm waiting for is the yeah. uh, Candyman uh, remake. Ooh, yeah. And it it the it remake did really well. Stephen King's it when they came back and did it. Again, oh yeah, they did another one to follow up on it. So um, clowns. Yeah, I saw I saw the. Oh yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, I clowns. saw the uh, original oh, Candyman. Yeah, and I, I couldn't even look in a mirror for a good week. <laughs> All right, let's move into some less horror stuff. We were talking and mentioned movies that made us on Netflix. I was so excited because I wasn't sure they were going to do more of them. Uh, I'd hoped they were going to do more of them. I know they did the holiday movies that made us. And then after that, I wasn't sure if they were going to have more. 
now I'm like, oh, I'm thinking about other movies they could do later because now it looks like maybe we might get more seasons because this show has uh, has been really popular. Um, I'm so this year we get uh, for season two we got Back to the Future. Totally makes sense to go to Back to the Future now and do that one. Pretty Woman. That one was a bit of a surprise that they did Pretty Woman, but I, I thought it was a great choice and it was a great um, his like a little documentary on Pretty Woman. Uh, they they covered uh, Jurassic Park. Another one was really good. Uh, Forrest Gump. And Forrest Gump. Um, yeah, Forrest Gump, the greatest running back in the history of the uh, Alabama Crimson Tide. He had, he came in at 5'10, 164 pounds, and eight touchdowns, one 1,215 yards, number 44 for the Alabama Crimson Tide, Jazz one. Forrest Gump. Is he the only uh, player from Alabama that you have a soft spot for in your heart in the history of Alabama Crimson Tide football? Okay, Ingram, who used to be the running back for the Saints. Uh, yeah. That, you know, if they played for Bama and then played for the Saints, they are forgiven, you know. It, it kind of rules, it like, it one rules out the other in your book. Exactly. Yeah, and then you can just, so, same thing with Forrest Gump, because a lot of people never saw his story after that movie, but it continued on because they did another book. And the book doesn't uh, end up getting uh, made into a movie. You know, Tom Hanks was like, I think we told the story with the first movie. I didn't see a purpose to do a, a second movie. But if they had made the second movie, a lot of people don't know this, but Forrest Gump was going to play professional football. And you know this, he was going to play for the New Orleans Saints. So that's exactly what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. That... When uh, the, uh, Kenny Stabler uh, was... Uh, the quarterback, yeah. yeah. If I recall, I think I read the book or I read like half the book. I just remember yeah. Kenny Stabler was in it. Well, and I was a fan. I know you're a fan of the movie. I was a big fan of the movie when it came out. And I remember the book came out. And I, 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 I'm like you. I read it in a bookstore. Like I, I kind of skimmed through it, read portions, like excerpts <laughs> of it. And like the Barnes and Nobles in the late 90s. I found it somewhere and I, I read it. And, and uh there's a little bit of a little bit of Forrest Gump there. Oh, by the way, and of course, Forrest Gump innovated uh, Robert Zemeckis and what they did in that movie. You wouldn't think when you think of technological advancements in movies, a lot of people miss Forrest Gump, but it was a huge technological advancement in terms of special effects. People think of Jurassic Park. Oh, they yeah. Think, they think of anything with George Lucas, Star Wars. They think of um, Avatar, another huge advancement in special effects and what they were able to do with 3d. Um, of course they've done some pretty amazing things with, with the Marvel movies in, in terms of special effects, but then Forrest Gump goes in the category as, as a special effects advancement because of what they were able to do and making him look like he was in those oh, scenes yeah. with former presidents and historical figures. Now, of course it's funny that a couple of YouTubers with a green screen and a, a smartphone could probably figure out a way to duplicate some of those scenes at home now because how oh, readily I think available there's a TikTok filter. <laughs> yeah. Where you can, you can get a, you get a medal of honor from a historical president of your choice. So exactly. Um, no, it's like Lieutenant legs. I was like, damn. <laughs> oh Yeah. <laughs> And that, and that's one thing I did not know about Forrest Gump that we learned. And spoilers: if you haven't watched the movies and made us, and you don't want to be seeing any of the intel to be spoiled for you, but that was one of my favorite parts. It was something I didn't know. I did know about how they had created those scenes. I'd seen it behind the scenes before about how they created those behind the scenes, but I didn't know that about how about that um, Footloose. Um, uh, what's his name? Names the tip of my tongue because he's always in everybody's movies because they used to have a game about him. Oh, the guy from Footloose, Kevin Bacon. Yeah, Kevin Bacon was the, the originally who they wanted for uh, Lieutenant Dan. And I'm I'm sitting there watching it. And we're both that's sitting a there whole different it. movie. <laughs> well, and I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there, and I'm like, yeah, you know, Kevin Bacon's different in that role, but he, you know, he he would have worked, just like in that when they did the Pretty Woman uh, segment. 
for the movies that made us um that uh mention of michael douglas michael douglas would have worked in the richard gear role it would have been a different movie but he could have played that part as well as the as the rich guy and, and pretty woman uh we got a uh, comment you gotta go watch that david black interview two thumbs up uh jazzy has some big shoes to fill following <laughs> that freak <laughs> Uh, he, he did have some really good David Black. I got big shoes. <laughs> oh, Jazz has got it. Jazz is Jazz is gonna. He's ready. He's he's ready and set tonight. He's he's got it. Um, but yeah, he did a really. David Black did a really good job of talking horror movies on that uh, on that video segment. So definitely go check it out. Shameless plug again. But uh, getting into back into uh, the movies that made us. Yeah, it was it was really interesting to see. It's always interesting interesting to hear the possible bi- possibilities of other people that could have played uh, or that was in line to play a character, you know, going back to star Wars, we had heard uh, of uh, Kurt, Kurt Russell and Sylvester Stallone as possible Han Solo's people that were being looked at for Han Solo, Burt Reynolds for Han Solo. Those are very, those are very different movies with Burt Reynolds, Kurt Russell, or, and I think out of that group, I think, <laughs> Kurt, I think, I think out of that oh, group, if you Burt could, Reynolds if you could, is Han Solo, man. That's it. I mean, that's a different movie. I mean, that is the, I mean, what is it? A flying Trans Am instead of the Millennium Falcon? <laughs> do you, do you paint, do you, do you paint the Millennium Falcon black with gold stripes? Um, does Don, De, does Don DeLuise play Chewbacca in that movie? If, if, hmm. if it's, <laughs> Do you recast uh, Princess Leia? Is it, is it? Is it? I can go. Is it Sally Field or Dolly Parton in the role of Princess Leia? <laughs> oh, that'd be too good. <laughs> I mean, there's there's a lot of different uh, possibilities of, of what it might have been, but I think Kurt Russell actually would have been out of the people I heard mentioned. Kurt Russell was the closest to, I think, um, that character would have been able to pull it off the best out of non Harrison Ford people. I think the uh, Kurt Russell, I could have seen that work in maybe, um, I don't know. Sylvester Stallone. No, I don't think that works with Stallone. You no, know, Stallone originally supposed to be uh, Beverly, Beverly Hills cop. And the movie was written for Sylvester Stallone. And when he got the script, he started making rewrites and he edited all the, and he wanted it to be less comedy and more you know, serious. He wanted it to be more of a shoot 'em up kind of action movie. So he completely rewrote the script to be more, you know, action and darker and more serious. And the producers didn't want to go that route. Oh, so they end up going a different direction. Of course, Eddie Murphy ends up being his breakout role. It's funny how these, these, these turns and twists and turns in these movies, um, if Michael Douglas had played the Richard gear instead of Richard gear, if Kurt Russell had played the, Han Solo instead of Harrison Ford, it changes. It's like a a timeline where the course of Hollywood history and movie history is changed by one casting change in a major movie like that. I mean, is Star Wars still? Oh a yeah, big for hit? real. Is Star Wars still a big hit if Burt Reynolds played played uh, Han Solo? Would that have still been the the? If I learned anything from the Marvel universe. That's an alternate timeline. <laughs> so it's it's completely depending on the timeline and and what what comes of that. Yeah. So there's yeah. some really really interesting. And speaking of alternate timelines, two very different people that were discovered by the same man, and that's one of the things I learned from the movies that made us was Pretty Woman. In Pretty Woman, of course, that movie ends up being the that casting of um george costanza the future george costanza costanza that's not his real name but the future george costanza is cast in pretty woman and you know you saw of course you know um that gary marshall wasn't super excited about casting him and it really was one of the last casting decisions that they made um was bringing him in to play the the kind of sleazy attorney in the movie but because of that oh, yeah. role him getting that role later few years down the road when they're getting ready to produce Seinfeld, 
they remembered him from Pretty Woman, and it was because of him getting Pretty Woman that he that the rest is history. He ends up getting Seinfeld, and so oh that, yeah, another example of one major major casting that led to another major casting because of him getting Pretty Woman. He ends up in Seinfeld, and how how would have Seinfeld been different if they had not had you know that George that guy who you're talking to me? How you're always talking about how when someone is somebody. I mean, to me, he's George Costanza. I don't know how anyone else. <laughs> like your character may have a different name, but yeah, that's the same character. I mean, that guy is George Costanza. But here's what's really interesting. So Gary Marshall does Pretty Woman. He makes Pretty Woman. He he starts really gets things going for for Julia Roberts after that. Man, she's off and running after Pretty Woman. She's she's known. She's been in a few movies. She had Mystic Pizza. But then she gets Pretty Woman, and then it's like, man, she's Hollywood, A list, Oscars. Uh, she's 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 on top of Hollywood for at least 10, 12 years after that, as far as being one of the top stars in the in the business. You get her, you get you 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 discover George Costanza basically. So Gary Marshall, who also produced Happy Days, is responsible for f- discovering the coolest guy in television history and the uncoolest guy in TV history, because he also goes and makes happy days and brings the world the fonts. So it, it, he goes, oh, yeah. from the, he goes from a thumbs up to a different thumbs up, but, and here's, and how synchronicity is it that there's photos of them both doing a thumbs up? I mean, was that planned? <laughs> Was that kind of an inside joke? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 see some, I, I see the irony there. But Gary Marshall, on his on his tombstone, among any other things you could put as accomplishments, this man discovered the coolest guy in television history and the uncoolest guy in television history. So, I mean, because George Costanza was the anti-fonts. I mean, so it just was... Oh, it's yeah. Just, it's, just, it's just so... It's just so um, talking about... Uh, multiverses. If there was a multiverse oh, yeah. where Henry Winkler, Henry Winkler played George Costanza, and George Costanza played the Fonz, and it flipped, and the Fonz is actually living with Seinfeld. I, I don't know. I don't know. What was a highlight for you this season for like the episodes, the movie that made movies that made us something that really jumped out at you that was like, oh, that's that's something I didn't know or something that really stood out to me. Man, I would say the uh, either the Back to the Future episode or the uh, yeah. Forrest Gump episode. Yeah. I mean, it's just uh, those movies are like iconic. You know, it's yeah. just like you've watched them over and over. Like you know every line, you know every scene. You think you know everything about it, and then like boom, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I thought all four episodes were good. Uh, I thought those like holiday cri- movies that made us were just a little bit, a little bit better. Yeah, but like, there's, there's your yeah, so far? it was like uh, yeah. what we call it, Nightmare Before Christmas, yeah. and uh, I think Elf. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, those were just like, I don't know, I, I was blown away. You know, um, I, like I wasn't blown away in the same way, but uh, you know, hearing a lot of the stories behind the scenes, you know. Uh, it was it was amazing. It's a lot of fun. It's it's a great show. I can think of ET. I definitely want to see an ET one down the road. They've already done Spielberg movies now, so there. I'm. I, it seems like Spielberg's on board for his movies being given the movies that made us treatment. I would think there's an interesting one behind ET. Uh, possibly Jaws, which is going farther back in the movie uh, history, but another Spielberg movie. Uh, Jaws, and I know Spielberg right now is doing business with Netflix because he inked a deal for a three movie Netflix deal. Steven oh, Spielberg wow. Did. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to be to direct or for him to executive produce, maybe a combination of some directing and some executive producing, but he is going to be uh, working on three uh, Netflix movies. I would assume probably one of those uh, limited uh, theatrical release then goes to Netflix pretty f- pretty quickly after um scenarios but yeah he's got three he's got a three movie deal right now with netflix so he's doing business at netflix um he's probably can hear that sound constantly when he's trying to sleep that boom, <laughs> boom. 
<laughs> you know the one I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. That uh, Netflix sound, the boom. It's 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 yeah. almost like that's got a hypnotic. It's got a hypnotic effect. Like I think if you rewinded that sound effect and slowed it down, it says something like, "Don't go to Disney Plus. Stay here." <laughs> but, no, um, I, saw, I saw this on uh, TikTok uh, where this little girl saw the letter in. And just thought the letter in was da <laughs> you know, like da -dum. <laughs> yeah. The father was like, "Why are you making that sound? Like that's not, you know." And when he realized, no, that's like the Netflix sound. And I was like, "Oh, that's good." <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it puts me in a trance every time I hear that. I could have watched the entire library of Netflix, and if I start hearing that repetitively, da -dum, I'm yeah. like. <laughs> I'm going to find something on it. I'm going to hack into like the, the French Netflix and start watching Bro, some French movies. You remember the HBO music before the movies back in the day? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's something about that sound. It, I, I'm telling you, they, they've got it. It's a, it's a trance. It's, it's doing something when you, when you hear it, but yeah, anyway, um, and of course, Netflix competing with uh, Disney plus, they got a lot more competition now. Because when they were the only only game in town, man, they just loaded up and people would just come running to Netflix. And now they've got the Disney Plus. They've got the HBO Max um, that's coming at them. And we're going to talk about Suicide Squad here in a little bit. Suicide Squad 2. Uh, I know you're excited to talk about that. I am too. Uh, so again, HBO Max this year coming out with movies straight to HBO Max. And then also in the theaters, which I, and I'm like, so they're surprised that Suicide Squad didn't do the numbers they were expecting it to do when it was on television at the same time it was in the theaters. I mean, I mean, it's it's a no brainer. A lot of people are going to stay home and watch it if it's available to watch on HBO Max. I mean, HBO Max is what eight dollars, I think a month. Oh um, yeah, something like that. Something in that range. So I mean, it's a no brainer. You're gonna go. I mean, you're gonna go to the theater. You're gonna buy a ticket. You're gonna have to dodge the Delta variant. And hope that you can get around the Delta variant. Uh, it's it comes with your popcorn. No. no, but yeah, you go to the theater. You're going to be in for uh, ten to twenty dollars for a ticket. I don't know what I haven't been to movie theater since the beginning of 2020. Now I love the theatrical experience. Oh, same here, man. Yeah, I'm not it, I'm not dog, during, dogging the theatrical experience, but during a pandemic, it's just too tempting to just go ahead and just watch it at home. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I, I'm all about the theater experience, man. It's just like especially like opening weekend, like it almost has a, I don't know, like closest thing you can get to like a music show, like yeah. people are, are experiencing this at the same time. And yeah. um, I don't know, man, it's, it's kind of like how some music is like good headphone music and some music's good to go see live, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I do miss going to the theater. Like, uh, you know, and as much as I hate to buy $10 popcorn, you yeah. know, I understand that helps keep the theater in business. Right. Uh, and it's part of the experience, man. Like, that's why I think the Alamo Draft House um, chain uh, really does well. Is they make, make the whole evening yeah. into an experience. But, man, it's just like I'm not ready to risk, you know, risk it in the uh, theater, you know. I would, like, sit, I would go sit at a matinee. I wouldn't want to go to a crowded theater. I'd go sit in a matinee if it was a, one of those where there's like make one other person in the theater and you can sit on the other end of the theater. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, the movie you asked me uh, recently. Now, Shang Chi's tough. Yeah. Shang Chi's, uh, uh, I'm not saying that right. Someone corrected me the other day online. Do you think it's like Shang Chi or I uh, think it, yeah, yeah. It, I think it's like a different vowel sound than what it looks like. Yeah. It's like Shang Chi. Shang Chi, I think maybe right closer. Yeah. Closer to it. That one's tough. That one's only coming out. It's, it's a Marvel movie. Again, that's going. To, we talked about a few months back. You asked me what's the movie that's going to make me want to go back to theaters, and you had mentioned that one. And now we didn't think we'd still be in where we're in uh, at this point, but here we are in August, and that movie's a uh, less than a month away. But I see myself probably going back to the small screen, even for that one. The one, the one that probably uh, that really is going to be tough for me to not want to go see the to, to to resist is Dune. When Dune comes oh, yeah. out, 
when Dune, when Dennis Villanueva's Dune comes out in late October, I believe that's one that I will probably have to, if, depending on where we're at. I mean, is there a drive-in movie theater that's showing it? I'll go see it at a matinee and I'll just sit, you know, wherever I need to sit. But that's going to be the one, the Dune, because it's a sci-fi movie. It's it's a movie that it's pretty epic. It's going to be the first of a trilogy. Um, it's getting really good buzz. Everybody's in that movie. Um, I don't know. Before Star Wars, before Star Trek, there was Dune, the book. Oh, yeah. That, in, well, that inspired all those movies. It's like Shang-Chi, and that might be the one I go see a movie in a hazmat suit. <laughs> Just to go support, right? Or support our, yeah, our, our, yeah. Support our dude, man. Support our dude, man. Um, uh, I think they released a new trailer, and it's looking fire, man. Yeah, no, it looks really good. You know, it's Marvel. Marvel doesn't miss much, um, and that that movie, you know, I'm really. It's really sad because we know that movie was going to be significant on the level of like a Black Panther or close. Oh and yeah, because of its. It's it's representation um, with the cast in a Marvel movie. So there's some historic proportional I mean, propor uh, historic proportions. That movie is a big deal and it's not going to get the shot because we already saw, you know, Black Widow had a good, great first weekend. Then it dropped off. It's too tempting. People can watch it at home where it's right as the Delta variant is starting. Poor Ryan Reynolds. We were just talking about this on email the other day. The free guy. Uh, now, now Ryan Reynolds is a guy who he's had great success with Deadpool. Two movies in Deadpool have been, and I love it that he embraces Deadpool. He knows that's that's his thing, and he's he's embraced it. He doesn't try to push it off. He he seems to be thrilled to be Deadpool, and he he he, you know he he loves it. He's going to do more Deadpool movies. But it seems like he's had trouble finding uh, success, a great deal of success. And I might correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm missing something. But it's not anything against him as far as his talent. I just don't think he's quite quite gotten his groove outside of Deadpool in terms of having big movies outside of Deadpool. I think he's another one of those actors who, no matter what movie he's playing, you know, he's playing himself. You know, like, yeah, it, it, he's... What no, he is just Deadpool and without a mask in this movie. I he's mean, that, he's that guy. He's that guy. The sense is, of humor, yeah. the delivery, like it's all the same. You know, yeah, he is who he is, and that's that's him, and he he's really entertaining at it. And I think that he does have. Uh, I heard he was going to do a Clue movie based on the board game. I don't know if that's still going to happen, but I think the Free Guy was finally going to be that movie could have finally been that movie. Now we'll know in a week when the reviews come out or in a few days, we'll know as reviews start to come in, but, and then we'll finally see it ourselves. But that movie, I feel like a lot of people were really excited about it. I had been talking to people about that for a year, that movie. And it seemed like it felt like the free guy was finally going to be his movie where kind of like Harrison Ford found his uh, success outside of star Wars when he got Raiders of the lost Ark. So yeah, he was still playing that character, but he did prove that he could do it in other in other IPs other than Star Wars. And of course, he got a string of movies after that, like Blade Runner and Patriot Game, and he was in all these other movies, uh, illustrious career playing that character. But he has a lot of movies where he's playing that character, and they are very successful outside of Star Wars. But uh, I feel like Free Guy could have been that movie. But the poor guy is going to come out right in the thick of where we're dealing with this Delta variant. And it's probably so it's probably going to bomb now. And it's not his fault. It's probably not the movie's fault. Uh, that's that. So I, I feel really bad for him. I feel really bad for what's happening with Shang Chi because that movie should should be probably the biggest thing on the planet next month. And it may not get the attention. It will do well. I mean, everybody that's Marvel fan will eventually see it, but they're probably not going to see it the same way they would have seen it. And it would it won't get the same initial buzz am i do you agree with what i'm saying uh yeah is that, um have you heard if it's going to be on disney plus or is it going to be one of those where it's like 30 dollars yeah it'll get it'll just they'll do just like they did with black widow from what i understand it's going to get that that premium video on demand yeah as, i know uh, like when all this stuff first started man i i think we both talked about like 
potential like new uh, business models. You know, yeah. it's like while it thirty dollars does seem like a big price tag to see a new movie. You know, if you get if you got four people in your family watching it, you know yeah. that's a that's lower than movie. Uh, that that's matinee prices. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and I do. Th I yeah, I agree. And I do think one thing I do know. For, I do feel like that that this is like a, a mulligan right now for actors and directors and producers. So that's the good side of this. Um, you know, as being like a football fan of college and pro football, coaches only get so many tries, so many years, so many seasons to do the job, and and it's it's a big business. If they miss one, two, maybe three three years, they're out if it's in big time pro and college football and what in your, what you did in the past is really matters what you're doing now and what you've done recently. So you could have won a super bowl, but then if you have three losing seasons at four years ago was your super bowl, you might be out. You in the hot seat. You're in the hot seat. And I think there's that in movies too. I think as a lead actor in a blockbuster movie, I think as a director you get, uh, but I think that if you're a director or producer or actor, this, during movies coming out during this pandemic, if they flop, that's not going to be counted against you. If they got great, I think what they're going to base success on is did they get good reviews uh, on Rotten Tomatoes? What was that? What was the initial uh, reaction to it? People saw it, uh, but you're not going to get, you're going to get a mulligan. This is like a mulligan year for producers. Uh, nobody's blaming Black Widow uh, not doing as well as past Marvel movies on Scarlett Johansson or on that director. I don't think yeah. they should, and I don't think they will. And I think Ryan Reynolds probably will get a mulligan with Free Guy. If that movie does get great buzz, it'll get bought by Netflix in a month or two, and it'll run if it hasn't already, and it will run streaming in a couple of months, and it'll probably be hugely streamed for that first week. But I think, yeah, I think right now, James Gunn's not getting, and this is a good segue to get into Suicide Squad 2. This movie is a lot of press this past week that Suicide Squad was a um, not was a was a was a bomb that it didn't that it didn't do uh, well. They were calling it a bomb. They were calling it a financial disappointment. It did. It came under the numbers of uh, Birds of Prey, which was not a critically well received movie. It was one of the parts of that Harlequin uh, trilogy now that we have. But um, I think James Gunn, these actors. This is a mulligan for them because this movie's gotten really good uh, reviews. It's gotten really good fan reaction. People were really excited about it. They're doing a Peacemaker standalone TV show on HBO Max, which I'll be really interested to see how that turns out. Because it was a character I was surprised that that was the character that's going to get a standalone. Um, because that character ends up turning out to have some, some, <laughs> issues. There's some issues there. It is a good character. It's funny at times, and then it gets really dark. Uh, and by the way, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Suicide, the new Suicide Squad, the Suicide, uh, suicide Squad, <laughs> Suicide Squad 2, then uh, you might leave now because we're going to be uh, release, releasing the spoilers on Suicide Squad. So I'm going to say right now, I, I enjoyed it. I love this movie. Uh, to me, it lived up to the hype that it was getting because I'd been hearing for, for quite a while it was going to be really good. I knew James Gunn being attached to it as the director. We already knew his his resume, Guardians of the Galaxy and Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Um, pretty damn good movies. Uh, so his output has been so far so good. So I was pretty, and the actors that were going to be in it, I know it was kind of a soft reboot to the last Suicide Squad that came out a few years ago. Um, how did you feel about this DC movie, Jess? Man, um, I'm glad I had it on uh, HBO Max to see because it took me a couple times to start it. Like, I guess sometimes you're not quite ready to see it. Uh -huh. uh, so, like, I think I started it like two or three times. And, and uh, I think by the third time, I'm like, okay, I'm getting this, you know, like, my biggest uh, complaint with it is it feels like kind of disjointed, you know, mm -hmm. like I appreciate the dark humor. I, you know, I like all the comic book deep cuts, but it just didn't feel like coherent. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I, I, thought, I thought it was just me, but then I think I, I may be wrong. It may be 
the original movie and not this one, but it was like the people who edited the trailer. Yeah. I think they had them like edit the film. Mm. And uh, for some reason it just, it just felt very disjointed, you know, like, the whole Harley Quinn, like that just felt like another movie, like shoehorned in there, you know, it's like, a, yeah, that was interesting. It, that was actually one of my uh, less favorite parts was that, was that particular situation where they were kind of like, almost like two different stories going on for a while. Yeah. Like I watched uh, birds of prey last week, just kind of, you know, yeah. in anticipation of this. Uh, but yeah, it's like, I don't know. Like one of my favorite thing about superhero movies is, Sometimes you don't need a lot of exposition, you know, it's like, okay, you know, Batman's story, you know, Superman's story, you know, like the Marvel guys, you know, you know, a lot of about them already, you know, but yeah, it's like outside of like Harley Quinn, like the rest of the uh, cast of, we call it the suicide squad. Like those were deep cuts, you know, like polka yeah. dot man. You know, and it's like, uh, yeah, and I think I found the uh, Starro that video. I yeah, think I sent yeah, you, you showed the me other a day. <laughs> there was a Starro episode on uh, what what you call it, the animated, yeah, robot chicken, a yeah. robot chicken, yeah. It would look, look just like the Starro, um, yeah. And there's some things, and one thing that was really cool is I love the story, the origin that of Bloodsport, and oh, yeah, in this movie, and the whole idea, the whole reason, or how he ended up in prison was i mean how baller is that the guy had a kryptonite bullet that he shot superman with and that's why he went to prison i mean that guy has got the best story of all the inmates in the prison on how he got there like how uh, did yeah, you, like, how uh, did yeah you that here? was supposed to be uh will smith's uh it was writ written as will smith's dead shot yeah uh but like i guess will smith was busy and that, yeah. that's how uh you know was it uh idris alva yeah, I uh, got cast for it. So they basically just found another like deep cut uh, character from DC. Yeah, and, and he, uh, he didn't want to play Will Smith's part. Like he had, he didn't want to take over that role. And that was one of the, from what I understand, that's one of the reasons why they just gave him a complete, a very similar character, which they wanted to be part of this, this Suicide Squad, but without it being the same exact character. Um, oh yeah. Man, Stallone as uh, the shark. Yeah. And like, I think that's the most likable character in the whole thing. <laughs> There's a little, little glimpse of shark. <laughs> King shark. Yep. Uh, <laughs> that was perfect. some perfect casting. <laughs> he's perfect. The voice, the voice on that. Sly Stallone is King Shark. Yeah, he was great in that. Loved, uh, loved hearing his voice playing that role. Um, Thought he was really good. I'm looking for the, I want the, uh, they're going to do some Groot shorts on Disney plus like little Groot short movies. I want some sh King shark short movies on, <laughs> on HBO max. Can we make that happen? I'm, I'm in, you got take my money. If you can make some King shark shorts <laughs> or uh baby shark. No, I'm <laughs> yeah, is it King shark. <laughs> King shark, shark, that could be a theme song. King shark, 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 shark. King shark, 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 shark. I mean, I have a four-year-old. I know very, I know very well about the baby. I was trying on. to set that off to see if he's still awake. Yeah, he's, he's gonna be banging on the door here in a second. Want to know what, why he wasn't invited to the, the baby shark party? Oh man, yeah. King shark, 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 the shark, 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 shark. <laughs> oh man, the, the baby shark. Yeah. So yeah, King shark's great. I really liked, um, the, uh, this character. Oh yeah. Rat catcher two. Rat catcher two. And I'll tell you what, I thought she had the deepest, uh, story. Well, I thought blood sports story with his daughter was was really good too. I liked her story and also they, her and blood sport had kind of a similar thing. Cause it was, you know, she was dealing with the stuff of losing her dad and he was dealing with the stuff of trying to make, uh, make things right with his daughter. So they oh, both yeah. had those, those issues. 
I kind of see what you're, I think I, I see what you're getting at with the, I know you felt like there was kind of some separation between the Harley Quinn story and how it didn't, you didn't like, it thought it seemed like a separate movie that kind of was inserted into the Suicide Squad 2 story. Um, I think for me, when, where I kind of see where you're coming from with it being a little off, uh, out of sync at times, was there was the James Gunn formula, Guardians of the Galaxy formula, that we saw more of early in the movie. And oh, yeah. We, and we saw it sprinkled out throughout the movie, but that was very Guardians of the Galaxy-ish in terms of the humor. Oh, the, the music cues. The music cues were there, which was great. I, I love the music cues in those superhero movies. Um, the the characters and their interactions, the relationship with each other, and sort of that team up, and then sort of the fish out of water, and, and all these things kind of being blended together. But then it had a much more darker... It had that Snyder verse darkness and how that sort of kind of gets thrown in there as well. And do those two things blend? And sometimes they didn't blend as well as I, I think is what you're coming at. Is that right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it just felt disjointed, you know, just, I don't know. It's, I, I literally root for DC. Like I love the Marvel movies DC characters are typically like my my favorite characters, yeah. and I like I want to see DC like do better. Of course, it seems like back in the day they were like the dominant, you know, uh, like comic books or whatever. Yeah, and uh, then like all the animated shows and stuff. But man, it's like I so want DC to be like on par with Marvel, and I guess it's just kind of going in, in with expectations of like okay, here's Marvel over here, like just slaying, just like killing it. Yeah. And here's DC at, you know, about batting, you know, 500. You know, it's like some things are really good. Like I watched Birds of Prey. Like I heard bad things. Actually, I thought Birds of Prey was more coherent than this. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know. It was a lot better than I expected. But yeah, then you have things like Wonder Woman, you know, like the Nolan Batmans, yeah. you know, and it's just like, but then they will just drop a dud, you know. Okay, and I'm like, gonna go down. I'm gonna go down the list with you. You tell me good DC or bad DC, okay? If you haven't seen it, we'll we'll just we'll skip it. Uh, Shazam. Good DC, good, like yeah, or bad. Good. DC. I thought that was good DC. You know, That's like good it DC. was funny. It had heart. You know, like it, it had heart. I don't know. It's like I would kind of closest comparison would be like Ragnarok. You know, Ragnarok mm -hmm. was funny. You yeah. know, it was. You know, but yeah, um, it was like big and tights. You know, in a cape. It was well casted. Yeah, they had a good concept. That's one of the things James Gunn likes to do. He says he likes to take a another genre and and then make a superhero movie using that as a template. So like with Suicide Squad, he said, I'm going to use 70s war movies as my template for what I'm going to do with Suicide Squad. And that's to make a superhero movie not so like um, just seem so like, oh, another superhero movie. I'm yeah, do I, I definitely like the shades of gray, like everybody in uh, the Suicide Squad, like that was like shades of gray, you yeah. know? Yeah, they did a good job with that. Um, okay, uh, the first Wonder Woman movie, the the original 2017. Banger. It was so good. I mean, I wish the, yeah. uh, the villain was a little bit more familiar, but uh, I thought yeah. it was like really solid. Really solid. Yeah. The Wonder Woman sequel, they Wonder tried Woman. so hard, it, but it didn't. You know, that one to me, I really had could not figure out what was the... I mean, I agree with you. I was disappointed with Wonder Woman 84 because I had such high expectations for that concept of a Wonder Woman movie set in the 1980s. Yeah. But one thing, I didn't even feel like they really took advantage and utilized music of the 80s as well as they should have. Uh, I felt like since it was Warner Brothers that I used to own a record company, I don't know if they still do, but they owned a record company at one point or they had music. Um, they could have done much better, I thought, with the music and using 80s music with Wonder Woman. Uh, I thought it was a huge miss not to have uh, Warrior uh, by Patti Smythe not used in that. You know, that, that song came out the same year, 1984. 
Patty Smythe, Warrior. It's almost as if that song was made. Literally, <laughs> it's like they knew that movie was going to be made someday, and they were writing it in advance. But to me, can you imagine how much better that movie moves up five notches with that that song in the movie? Oh yeah, and you had I a mean, whole additional several months to 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 go back and and re edit that movie because they had. I mean, I I've, I've ranted about this before, but for one thing, they had like there was just things in there that just did head scratchers. It could have been a good movie. It needed to be recut. That's for sure. The songs needed to add some new song, so a few more songs in there. Um. It's just, it was a misfire. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't. Well, that one scene where they're going, she's going off to the rescue, but she stops at her apartment to, to change wardrobe or something. <laughs> meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, there's like Armageddon is happening. Like the wor world is literally ending and she stops to change wardrobe. I just, that was. the right shoes, bro. <laughs> I guess. I mean, it just wasn't. It was like, where did they. And then there's that scene where they're in the. They're, they're flying. And that seemed to go on forever. Like, do I need 10 minutes of the flying? I mean, it's just. And I mean, the, the, the actors were great. It was well cast. We know our buddy, uh, Pedro Pascal, is in there. Yeah. Great, act, great actor. Uh, Gal Gadot is, I mean, is Wonder Woman. Um, it was ambitious, but man, it, it missed the mark, you know, like yeah. I hate putting down anybody's work, you know, and yeah. like, I know it's hard to get these things made yeah. and no. to be like a franchise this big, you know, it was like, it, you, you missed, like I wanted to be much better. Oh, I'm with you. I was rooting for it and I'm, I'm hopeful that they rebound on the, when they make the next one. Okay. Uh, Man of Steel. Okay, I will always have a little bit of a weakness for, like, Superman movies. You know, yeah. like, uh, being an adoptee, I'm like, yeah. okay, Superman, I get, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So where does that one land for you? Oh. Uh, I don't know. Like, it, Bad DC it's or good, good DC? Good side. I mean, it's like the best. Good yeah. DC, but. No, toward the bottom of good DC though. Okay, yeah, that's that's fair. Okay, I'll run one more by you. Uh, let's see. We talked about Shazam. We talked. About, oh, uh, Aquaman. Good DC or bad DC? And they're making the sequel. They're about to start filming too. I think you're on the fence there. I think you're on the fence with that one. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Huh? Either I'm having a stroke, <laughs> no. or you're having a stroke uh, in the middle of our lives. I, I hate to say it. It it's like the top of the bad DC. You know, okay. Like, it could have been like the bottom of the good DC, but it's right there. You know, um, yeah. I wanted to be better. You know, heard a lot of good things, missed it in theater, and kind of glad I did. Jason Momoa, good a good Aquaman though, right? Does a good job with Aquaman. I don't know. You're not For sure about him as Aquaman? Aquaman? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's like okay, man. We're a similar generation, man. We had super friends, the Justice League, man. We yeah. had like old school, like blonde, green pants, orange yeah. top, you know, yeah, like. Yeah, he was the Urkel of the Super Friends. You know, he was like the little guy with the total pole. Yeah. You know, and then all of a sudden, like, okay, and now Aquaman's this big, muscular, you know, long hair, you know, God, you know, I'm like, I don't recall him being Godish before. Yeah, they try to do their own little spin on it. You know, they've, they've, all, they've evolved that character, I think, because of all the, uh, blowback he took over the years. He kind of started to become kind of a yeah. running joke, running joke. Uh, look at this. Now this was, this storyline was actually in the comic books with the weapon, uh, the gun. Oh yeah. Now, with Joe, before we go to that, a lot of my feelings really like the plot of Aquaman. Yeah. <laughs> Who, who's that? The plot. <laughs> a lot of my uh, female friends, 
they enjoyed the plot. <laughs> oh, yes. I, <laughs> of, uh, I, I like it. I like it. Nice. Um, like I didn't enjoy the plot as much as they did, but I appreciate the plot. <laughs> uh, yeah, so some, of the, some of our friends appreciated that that part of the uh, part of the movie, a part of the story, <laughs> the the plot. Um, also, <laughs> we were talking about this uh, with the uh, the kryptonite gun. And that's a cool setup for that character. Uh, that actually, uh, I- Idris, Idris, the actor, I- Idris, uh, has pitched the idea of wanting to do that prequel of his character uh, in that that story between him and this face off with Superman. I'm like, yeah, that would be that could, man. That would be kind of fun. That would, that, that would be awesome. But his character was really good, but to see him kind of make that arc evolution to where he's at now. But to go back to before he had his redemption story and see him when he was just kind of the John Wick of the uh, the DCEU uh, and then trying to go after the biggest catch on the planet, uh, trying to uh, to murder Superman, that would be a kind of an interesting story. Um, there were some good Suicide Squad memes this week uh, that came up. Uh, when you first meet her versus when you get to know her. There's a... Harley Quinn. <laughs> uh, this is another one that's kind of plays all the same idea. Oh, this is our Back to the Future stuff. By the way, there's there's the original casted. Uh, we were Eric Stoltz uh, that that they talk about the movies that made us was originally going to be um, Marty. In fact, he shot the movie. He made the movie. Uh, Eric Stoltz filmed Back to the Future. Almost finished it. He filmed. He filmed several scenes. I don't know if he finished. I don't know if there's an Eric Stoltz cut. But I wouldn't mind seeing J- uh, Zack Snyder edit the Eric Stoltz cut and release that on streaming. Doing a Snyder cut of Back to the Future with the Eric Stoltz footage. Would you? Would you? Uh, oh, would you yeah. want to see that? Because it it fits. It fits because Eric Stoltz was doing a darker version of Back to the Future. I mean, he was doing a darker, more brutal oh, yeah. version of Marty Marty McFly. I mean, he had the all black on. He was wearing the black jacket. He was kind of doing more of the brooding, kind of the darker. Um, and he's a great actor. Did you ever see Mask? Him and Mask was Cher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's him. That was Eric Stoltz. And then he did the second Fly movie. He was the son of the son of the Fly. Uh, so he's also in that. He plays the, the the second Fly, like the Fly, the Fly's son, in the sequel to the Fly. Um, but he's not not the comedian like Michael J. Fox. Doesn't come with the comedy um, chops that Michael J. Fox brings to the role, and and that's another one of those like steps where if they stick with Eric Stoltz, is that movie still a hit, or does it bomb? Is it another Howard the Duck? And and speaking of Howard <laughs> the Duck, that would be another that would be another good movies that made us. They could do a whole season of movies that flopped. The movies that flopped could be another season. <laughs> and the movies that flopped us. <laughs> movies that flopped us. But here's a here's one of this really interesting I read the other day about Howard the Duck. That was originally supposed to be voiced by Robin Williams. In fact, Robin Williams worked two weeks on that voicing Howard the Duck. But back then they didn't have the the technology or the special effects uh the same as they do yeah. now. And he you know, Robin was so used to improvising. Everything he did was an ad lib or improvisation. Um, and if you worked with Robin Williams, you just knew that you had to be ready for that. He was going to bring that. For years, he wanted to host the Oscars, but they were afraid to let him host the Oscars because they didn't know what he was going to show up and do. And they didn't know if that Oscars would would take eight hours to complete <laughs> because he would just go off the rail. <laughs> and they wouldn't be able to pull him back in once he once he got going. Uh, and he was a genius at improv and ad libbing and doing all that stuff. But he was trying to, he wanted to ad lib that character. But what happened is that the, the, they were using back then they were filming. Uh, it was like, you know, the, the animatronics or the puppet, they couldn't, they couldn't film yeah. to catch up with his improvisation. He had to voice with what was being moved already like what was being filmed. 
Like he had to just voice what was being, so he had to stay on a script and he just was frustrated with it. He said, I can't work this way. Just going from a script and just trying to map whatever the, um, the duck is doing. I've got to voice that. So he quit after two weeks and then they brought in some actor that was a voice actor that nobody had, had heard of and they took the role, but you wonder if they had been able to figure that out and say, okay, we're going to figure out a way. Uh, for me, I almost would have said, you know, Robin Williams is more important than the duck. I would have said, let's make Robin make him up to be the duck instead of using a puppet. Let's, <laughs> uh, you know, a Jim Henson Muppet. Let's just put Robin in the feathers uh. and beak and let him improv. Because I think that movie's a hit with Robin Williams in a duck suit. Am I, do you, do you think I'm right or do you think I'm wrong? It's a much better movie, don't I would you be think? There for it. <laughs> I mean, this is this the is Miss Doubtfire. Low on that window, bro. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I put my money on Miss Doubtfire every time on Mork. <laughs> by the way, another person discovered by Gary Marshall. Gary Marshall was the OG of discovering future uh, mega movie stars. He also discovered Robin Williams because he gave Robin Williams. Oh yeah, Mork and Mindy. Mork and Mindy. So. Yep. And Mork was the first guy and the only guy that ever really got over the two people that got over on the fonts. And it's funny that it was these two people. It was Mork and Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks uh, guest starred on an episode of, of Happy Days and he socks the fonts. He punches them out. The character he was, the yeah. Tom Hanks was playing. Yeah. So there's only two characters that were OG, that were come in, that were, that were gangster enough to take down the fonts was Mork. Because Mork would just use his little alien powers and he would freeze him. Like he'd be in the middle of doing an A or he'd be in the middle of trying to sock Mork and then he would freeze him. <laughs> and then, and then, I, I don't know. know. I still enjoy Henry Winkler in that football documentary about Louisiana, like college football. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? Oh, what, the was water? That documentary? <laughs> what was the documentary called? Yeah. What? Water the boy? Water boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a football True documentary story. about Louisiana, <laughs> Louisiana football, right? A serious documentary. Louisiana college football. Yeah. <laughs> great, a great documentary. It was very provocative. It really got into the uh the the meat on the bones of Louisiana culture and Louisiana football. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Where I had of, of Harlequin. I, I was really getting into the Harlequin memes uh, this week. When you first get the job versus working there for a year. Have you ever had that job, Jazz, that made you make that transformation? No, oh, no, yeah. com no comment or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one more thing on Suicide Squad. Uh, one more bit on Suicide Squad. I read today that the actress, uh, Harlequin, um, her names are tip my tongue. She's brilliant. Uh, but she also played uh, the ice skater, Tanya Harding. Did you see her Tanya Harding movie? Oh, damn. No, but didn't we talk about this on an episode like four or five years ago? Yeah, like she plays. I, Tanya or something? Yeah, I, Tanya. Yes, you remember that. We talked about I, Tanya. You had a thought. You had a theory. <laughs> You had a theory on I, Tanya, or a, a thought on I, Tanya, did you not? Yeah, I know you made a meme of it. I wish I could remember what it was. <laughs> Weren't you confused initially because you thought I, Tanya was a new Apple uh, product where it was going to be kind of like a woman or something talking yeah. to you? <laughs> the new I, Tanya from, from Apple. Anyway, yeah, she's really good in Itania, but I read today, you know, the scene with the key in the movie, it's Suicide Squad 2, where she gets the oh, key yeah. out of the guards and she does all that. She did all that herself. There's no stunt double. She did the whole scene. She really did it just as you saw it. Amazing, right? Oh, I'm impressed. Yeah, that was, that was, that was baller. No doubt. That's pretty baller. Now, did she practice it? I don't know. 
How many times did it take her to practice it? I don't know. But I, that's that's some amazing footwork. Um, speaking of Footloose, talking about Footloose earlier. Oh my goodness, Jazz One. Any more thoughts before we exit? Man, Rip Milton. Man, that was the saddest movie. Which one? Like when they were arguing about <laughs> who was Milton, like. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh no, like I, I really appreciate the met the, the meta humor in in this movie. Like it, it was, it was close. You know, yeah. uh, I don't know if it's yeah. bad timing. Uh, I don't know if it fell apart in the edit a little bit, but yeah, my. Biggest uh, complaint with it, not really complaint. It's just, it just seemed a little disjointed. Like it just didn't seem like it was all the same movie. You know, I heard like a, uh, one of the first drafts of this was like the suicide squad going after Superman, you know? Uh -huh. And I was like, that would have been, been interesting, but uh yeah, it was good. Like, I'm, I'm curious to see if they're going to do anything else with these characters. Like, I really want to see more of King Shark, you know. Uh, I, I'm enjoying the Harley Quinn character. Uh, I can't remember her name, but the woman that plays that, she, I think she just, like, perfectly cast for that. And uh, now that I've been introduced to some of these characters, I'd definitely like to see uh, some more. You know what would be cool is that they flipped it. You were talking about them have they had to go save Suicide Squad going after Superman. What if someone that definitely sometimes or oftentimes works in the gray area is Batman, Bruce Wayne? What if they did a Suicide Squad movie where Batman gets a little out of control? Like his vigilante work goes a little bit out of control. And oh, they're, yeah. actually, they're actually trying to go arrest him and they can't catch him. They send the Suicide Squad to try to break in to the bat cave and capture batman and bring oh, yeah. him back to authorities oh, that man. would be good we're we're talking about good dc doom yeah. patrol good dc, good DC like, uh, the yeah. third season of that is dropping like next month or something yeah it's like yeah. i'm looking forward to that like uh i don't know it's just like uh, Marvel is just dominating. I'm I'm rooting for DC. Like I said, there it's a uh, it's about fifty fifty whether it's going to be just incredible, mm -hmm. like the Joker, yeah. or a joke like uh, plot. <laughs> uh, Joker, good DC, right? You would put that on good DC. Yeah, yeah, incredible. Joker, yeah, Joker. incredible DC. Yeah. Does this Suicide Squad still uh, fall ahead of Aquaman for you? Does it go ahead of Aquaman? Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely could see myself watching it again. You know, yeah. um, I may try to like rewatch the first one. Like it's not quite a part two. Like it's not really a sequel, but, but and it's not really a reboot. You know, yeah, it's, I it's guess really trying to figure out exactly yeah. what it is. Well, I, I, I mean, I guess they called it a soft reboot because it's not a full reboot, yeah. but it's sort of a soft reboot. It's still, I mean, everything that happened in the first Suicide Squad is still canon. Um, and apparently the Joker is now dead in the timeline when they get to the second uh, Suicide Squad, even though I don't think they mentioned that they sort of, re I mean, she sort of references her history of bad, bad relationships and her boyfriend history, um, which I think is kind of a nod to her relationship with the Joker. Um, but apparently he's dead in the timeline at this point, the, the Jared Leto Joker. That's part of the DCEU. Oh uh, yeah. Part of the DCEU um, story. So anyway, we're, we're still going to get we a lot more DC to come. They've got Shazam two uh, that's in production, uh, black Adam, which is part of Shazam. It's going to be the rock doing the black Adam, which is the arch nemesis to, Sh to Shazam. And that's going to be a standalone black Adam movie. They've got, uh, they're doing, uh, I hear they're getting, Harley Quinn's going to take a break for a while. She's not going to be doing anything for a while. They're working on uh, a couple of Superman projects. 
they're doing they're doing the TV stuff too because there's a Green Lantern project that's in the work for in the works for HBO Max. Um, so there's a lot. Co- oh, of course, the big one is Flash, the Flashpoint movie. Um, probably one of the most hype, probably the most hype DC project because that's the one that's going to bring Michael Keaton back in a multiverse situation, and also Ben Affleck. So it's going to be not Batman, but Batman um, in that movie. And then, of course, we're going to get the Flash. Uh, there's going to be Supergirl. Yeah. Uh, and no telling what else they're going to put in that movie. So it's about to be. It's all about Man, multiverse. You, um, multiverse, yeah. Uh, the animated DC stuff has like been solid. Like, I mean, I got yeah. the um, HBO Max to watch this league to talk about it here. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to get get it for a month you know i yeah. will watch everything i want to this month and then new stuff kept coming out and then right. this and then it's just like damn it oh my god i think i'm just Rio max guy now you know but yeah their dc hub on there is like there's a lot of good stuff like uh some stuff i'm surprised how good it was like birds of prey was pretty damn good you know yeah yeah, some things that kind of slipped through the cracks. Well, it's a good cra- it's a good character. I mean, Harley Quinn is a good character. It's very well played by uh, by the actress that plays our. I can't believe I can't remember Margot Robbie, Margot freaking Robbie, uh, Harley. Oh Quinn. yeah, yeah. She's, she's brilliant. She was in uh, Once Upon a Time in in, in uh, Hollywood. Um, she's in a bunch of really good movies, but she is excellent. Harley Quinn also one of the best DC characters. It's uh, I think probably the most. Pop, one of the most popular cosplays of all time. Would you agree? One of the best cosplays of all time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But there was yeah. a there was oh, a stretch yeah, there. There was a stretch there where on social media, everybody everybody was doing a Harlequin. On the Instagram, they should have just called it <laughs> Harlequin Harlequin page, uh, or something. Because <laughs> there, I mean, when MySpace, even back into the MySpace days, it was Harlequin space. I mean, there were so many Harley. Maybe it's who I follow. I don't. Damn it. Maybe it's not it might not be everybody's news feed. But my news feed was full of Harlequins. Back during Bro, the MySpace days. You're an algorithm. Days. <laughs> my, Harley, my, 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 uh, my MySpace and Instagram is Harlequin um, 24-7. I thought it was everybody's. I was like, oh, doesn't everybody have Harlequin all over their news feed? What? <laughs> <laughs> doesn't everybody have sexy Darth Maul? Sexy woman Darth Maul on their news feed? You know what I'm talking about. You've seen, you've seen a couple of those. The red, the red painted woman showing cleavage. Okay. I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> oh boy, I'm sweating. Oh, I've been sweating for this. You know how hot here. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, man, boy. I miss the uh pop dope, man. It's nice doing this from the jazz cave, but eventually at some time, man, we'll be in the same space at the same time, but not for now though. Ah, uh, it's super lonely. I look across. It's just I'm looking at a ring light and and a and an empty couch. It's it's not the same, man. It's not the same. I miss seeing across, looking across the table and, and uh, talking to you. Uh, but yeah, we're we're here for now. But I'm glad we could do this. I'm glad we're able to do this and 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 uh, still see each other. Um, well, Jazz oh, One, absolutely. You have, you have a superb week, and uh, we'll we will be getting, getting back together next week because we're gonna do reactions on what if. Uh, the the finale of Bad Bro, Batch. This is a, this is a, it's a good week to be and What if dropping tomorrow? Bad yeah. Batch coming out, and uh, oh, yeah, goodness. it's gonna be some good TV th- this week. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Well, Jazz One, you have a good week, and everybody out there have a great hour, second, month, year, millisecond. Hopefully, a, the year gets better. But everybody out there have a good one. I'm Stephen Presley. Jazz One. Good night. Roll the outro. You know how we do it. Outro. Where you at? It's here somewhere. I promise it's coming. In the meantime, let's talk. We'll talk. Okay, there you go. There's the outro.
Thunder Pop is a Hit the Bricks production.